Hello everyone, this is L Spectral. Welcome back to the Land of Empires. And today I have a special little video to share on the top alliances that currently exist in the game. And typically you would only have one alliance per server that really dominates after season three. And by season six or season seven, you will only have pretty much a single consolidated alliance within each server. So whenever we're referring to a server, sometimes we refer to the server by the alliance name. So let's dive straight into this. And <laughs> now I'm going to do a server uh, alliance ranking video, not a specific BOD or any specific combat video. But I know that many people are interested in asking what exactly are the current top alliances in the game. So although this will be quite a boring video, I hope to share that information with everyone today. So starting out from the lowest alliance in order from alliance number, I mean server number three to server number 100. I identified nine top alliances within these servers. After I go over these alliances, I will do a couple special mentions because there are at least a few up and coming alliances which are looking really, really strong. But starting out with server five, so, and the main events I'll be evaluating these alliances on are the Holy Mountain Battle, the Battle of Destiny, and finally, the Battle of Disorder. And primarily, most of the rewards come from the Battle of Destiny as well as the Battle of Disorder. The Holy Mountain has kind of uh, been a little outdated since about Season 4. However, it is still a very good measure of an alliance's overall power. So our the first alliances we'll review right now is Server 5 Soul. And their main player in Server 5 is Ifhif. Rumors say that he is also piloting an account called Memory, which is also a very respectably strong account. Now for Holy Mountain, this alliance can be very dominant, particularly when led by Ifif, because Ifif's march, especially when um, combined with a rally of more than 2 million troops, is really a force to be reckoned with. And I would rate so an A plus overall in the Holy Mountain rankings. And one thing to note that the ranks are based on their evaluation for top alliances. So if you are a B rank, don't worry about that. You are still a very strong alliance, all considered. In the Battle of Destiny, uh, one thing that Soul kind of falls short in is the ability to actually push towards the center. Because once you are able to push towards the center, you're able to establish your territory with flags. And it's kind of hard to push in most of the time. But if it kind of just has that punching power to be able to break through defenses if there are not too many Glorious 10 players on the opposing side. But if they can touch the center, Server 5 is or was really good at racing when Deuce Dog was still on the server. But last I've heard, Deuce Dog, as well as a few other people, have moved to server 116. And so this is kind of already outdated, unfortunately. Uh, server 5, I would say, is overall ranked slightly lower. I would rate them about a half tier lower overall across these different metrics because uh, since I actually created this list, which has been reviewed by many players on the Land of Empires Discord, things have unfortunately changed already. Things change quite fast in this game, but this is Server 5 Soul. So overall, I'll rate this alliance an A+, maybe just an A after the move. I will review the top players as I go through these alliances. Thank you, the, thanks to the Latinos server for providing kind of outdated but very useful records on player information across all the different servers. So if any of you are interested, be sure to join this server, which is a very solid community happening here. Um, so fly, so their top players are Ifif, his pilot memory. I'm not too sure if the original memory still plays. Witcher, um, I think he might have moved already. Dexterous, unfortunately, he quit rec recently. And then there's Burner and a few others. I think Gaspish already moved. Amarina, I'm not too sure. Uh, but overall, unfortunately, they recently lost a lot of power due to moving to various other servers. The next server we will review is Server 10. And this is pretty much the uncontested server in terms of actual 
punching power. So when you have the full server 10 activity, which include the top players, which I'll review right now, it is led by General and FRZ, that being their top, followed by Psycho, Palm, Car. And let me check their glorious 10 players. And Polaris, supposedly, because Polaris is FRZ's pilot account or farmer account, <laughs> a glorious 10 farmer account. Can you believe that? Uh, but recent news is that FRZ hasn't logged on for a week, but rumors is that he is currently on vacation. So we will have to see if FRZ comes back. But this is one of the strongest account in the game right now. I believe this account is maxed across every stat type. And when they are full on activity, they are virtually uncontested in Holy Mountain. In Destiny, they are a bit slow to get there, but... Overall, I would say the moment they touch, no other alliance really can push them out. In terms of racing, I don't know how good they are or how fast they are at actually getting first touch on the center. But as far as I've seen, uh, no other alliances has really been able to prevent 197 from completely surrounding the center. So when that is the case, 197 doesn't really need to race. They just need to touch the center and surround it. And... Apparently, no other alliances has been able to prevent 197 has doing that from doing that in the past. When it comes to disorder, 197 is very strong, especially when skill three is unlocked, because skill three relies kind of on your punching power, and they have a lot of punching power, especially in terms of the top players. Sadly, they fall a little short in terms of activity, but if they are able to touch the center um, center shrine then it will be very difficult to come out victorious in a 1v1 fight on the center shrine against server, one nine, uh, server 10. Overall, I would say this server is ranked S. And in terms of at least the Holy Mountain and the Battle, Battle of Destiny, they are the strongest server in the game currently. So whenever this server becomes unlocked, uh, I know this server becomes locked from time to time together with server 75. Uh, this is a very good um, option if you want to migrate to a strong server that kind of does their best across every event, aside from the holidays. The next server I will review is Server 22 Rome. Now, these are all very, very old servers. I know them very well, and I also know their players quite, a, uh, quite well. I have played with them in various different events many times. And the main players that are carrying Server 22 Rome are these two very powerful players known as Batty and Nightmare. So if we were to go to, I guess Lord Power would actually be more representative. So looking at Harris, no, not, not Nightmare, did I say Nightmare? Excuse me. It's Batty and Harris in Server 22. Now Harris has a maxed account while Batty is near maxed. He's probably already maxed uh, in terms of the main infantry and archer stats. But these two are especially Batty. So Batty is very active. Whereas Harris, he can be active during key events. But when both are active, they can even contend against S10, Server 10, 197 in the Holy Mountain and also maybe the Battle of Destiny. So I know they are top tier in the Holy Mountain because they have been able to beat Server 10 197 uh, when Server 10 was doing quite well. So when a majority of their top players were playing. Server 22 has also has seen some very strong accomplishments in the Battle of Destiny as well as the Battle of Disorder. Although they may be slow to push in the Battle of, the Battle of Disorder, if they are able to touch the center, very few alliances can actually win against them in a 1v1 in the, battle, in, in the center battle. There has been a case where NMR, which is an alliance I'll review momentarily, clashed directly against server 22, and they got kind of eviscerated in the middle. Because once skills 3 unlocks, these two players kind of treat you as their meat grinder. They will grind you down to a pulp, and there's nothing you can do about it. In Destiny, Batty has been shown to be very active. However, in terms of flag building, they just kind of lack that necessary activity to quickly build and secure the center. So sometimes they are forced to race, and when it comes to that, they are probably not the best racers. Overall, I would rate Server 22 Rome 
at S minus. And when Bells, Harrys, and Batty are on, they are nearly unbeatable, only matched by server 10. Other, no other, notable, server <laughs> other notable players include Nightmare, Beast, Darkness, Bo. These are all Glorious 10s players, and they have been playing for a very long time. They also have uh, Yu Yu, uh, Pite, and of course, our Glorious Ninja, who has very many pilot accounts. So he is a big boost towards Server 22's activity. He builds flags very well, and he is a decent racer. However, not fast enough. Next up is Server 30 Drew. And this is a really uh, quite a mysterious server because they have shown early on that they have very little interest in the Holy Mountain battle. A lot of the times their top players really do not participate in the Holy Mountain battle. Their top players being Maserati, United, if I could find it right here. So going by Lord Power, we have United, we have Maserati, and we have Inc. who moved to server 30, I think about four months ago. We have RJ and Altrius, all very good fighters. So when all are active, Drew is definitely a very formidable force. Holy Mountain, I have never really seen them too active, so it's really hard to judge how well, how strong they actually are within the Holy Mountain battle. If I were to rate them directly, I would probably put them under B plus or A minus. In the Battle of Destiny, I really haven't seen like much notable results from Drew, so I will put them at B plus. However, when it comes to the Battle of Disorder, they are one of the most dominant alliances historically in the Battle of Disorder. Although they have faltered a bit since, they are still very dominant and is capable of controlling center even against multiple alliances. So depending on their activity, I would rate them between B plus overall and A minus because they pick their battles. Sometimes not all of their top players will participate, but when they do, Drew is a force to contend with. Next up is NMR. And NMR actually combined with BBB has one of the strongest mid-range uh, set of players I have seen in this game. So starting out with NMR, activity-wise, NMR probably comes up on top. And they can sustain very, very long battles, which is kind of currently the meta of the game, actually. In Disorder, you can fight for maybe three days in a row, just in Area 2. When it comes to the center area, it's another three-day battle. And NMR is definitely capable of sustaining a six-day battle. When it comes to the Battle of Destiny, they can sustain over 40-hour fights straight without sleep. And that is the case as well in the Holy Mountain. But of course, the Holy Mountain battle only lasts about 10 hours. So this is a piece of cake for them. Overall in power, I would rate them A- minus for the Holy Mountain, mostly because they just lack that top end punch. So if we were to look at their players, what server are they again? 39. How is 39 not diamond? What is this madness? Okay, maybe this is just hasn't gotten updated. It has gotten updated. Excuse me, this, <laughs> okay. Well, this needs to be a diamond because this is obviously one of the strongest servers, probably top five, well, definitely top five. And they have Ink. Okay, you guys are just making fun of me now. So Ink is no longer part of Drew apparently. He either got bought or joined NMR. <laughs> and so yeah, we have Ink. Cursed Assassin, which is a recently bought account. We had Blitz, a very old player. We have Asgare. We have Maximus, who is a very intense fighter. And we have, I don't recognize this person. We have uh, Yadav Vishnu and Marlene. Love and Pills, Roko, Oleg. So you can see that NMR has no shortage of Glorious Tense. And that is what makes their mid tier, I, I would say mid upper tier, so damn strong. That combined with their activity makes them a force to be reckoned with in all three different categories. Holy Mountain Battle, they are very well coordinated and knows the ideal combinations in season seven, which is very confusing, but they are very good. They have a very good handle on it. Whenever you face their rallies, their rally punching power 
is relatively strong simply because they have so many Glorious Tens and T12 troops joining that rally. And finally in the Battle of Disorder, they have one of the fastest building speeds as well as one of the uh, highest end activities I've ever seen out of any alliance. So overall, I would rate this alliance an A, but since many players appear to have joined this alliance since I made this list literally two days ago, I would probably rate NMR an A+, or even an S tier alliance, depending on really how well they perform in the upcoming Battle of Disorder. But for now, I would say NMR is an A+, and a definitely a top option if you are looking to migrate to this alliance. They have a very good heal sharing system, as well as a very good resource farming system, most likely, and I will be sharing some secrets on resource farming in my next video. But for now, let's just review the rest of their top players, which include a bunch of nobodies, but either way, <laughs> they are very strong and very organized. Up next is BBB. This is Bound by Blood, and overall, I would say they are a very powerful alliance right next to NMR. And as of the current state of player movement, I should check the actual players before I dive into the review. As we know, players move all the time now that migrations have become uh, so much cheaper. We have Coffin Dancer leading the fray, followed by Crimson Knight, which is the, probably the most insane fighter in this game. He fights at 120% every single, uh, every single event, but as a result, he's usually short on healing. And yeah, but he is always up for a fight. We have Abbas, Hiroshi, who are all very strong, Freeze, and a couple other notable players. Overall, I think NMR has kind of pulled ahead of BBB recently. Uh, I kind of rated them roughly similar before, but I think they are superior to BBB now. Overall, in Holy Mountain, I think Coffin Dancer has a very strong account, and therefore they kind of have both activity as well as high-end power. Maybe not peak power, but they definitely have enough strong players as well as Glorious Tens to deserve the A ranking for Holy Mountain as well as Destiny. Disorder-wise, they are very dominating, but unfortunately, BBB kind of is an alliance that performs very well across all events, but as a result, uh, have to spend a lot of healing due to the constant uh, fighting across every event. And as you know, healing uh, requires both resources as well as speed ups. So it's kind of a double whammy. You have healing resources, but you might not have the actual food and wood to heal those troops. So yeah, sustaining that level of fighting and activity is definitely not easy. But even then, BBB has proven itself to be one of the top alliances and definitely deserves an overall A rating. Next up is Server 67 Wolf. And this alliance is very active and also very balanced. Although they, uh, they lack a bit of top end activity, if I could find it here, this is overall power. Where is my Lord power information? See, this is why we kind of need a community account. I don't see any information on their Lord power. Here we go. So their top players include Pelasgain, Josh, Angry Lord, Tenebri, Tirajel, and a couple more. But overall, I think this server is very balanced. Although they lacked, uh, although they lack high end power, they still have very good coordination and enough glorious tens to sustain, uh, uh, to put up a very good fight in Holy Mountain as well as the Battle of Destiny. And although they lack top end, they build very fast for sure. So their activity makes up for a bit of their lack of top end power. So overall, I would rate this alliance at B+. They have shown very good performance against various different alliances. So although may, they may not be one of the absolute top alliances, they are definitely an option if you ever want to consider migrating. Uh, pretty much all of these servers are great for migrating, maybe with the exception of server 5 due to its current unstable situation and, and server 30. Uh, because one of the top players recently left apparently to server 39 and I just lack a general understanding of how server 30 operates at this time. 
but overall, Server 67 Wolf is very well respected and overall fairly balanced in power. Up next is Server 3575 Game. Their Holy Mountain performance, as well as Destiny and Disorder, are very top tier, especially for Disorder, where they probably have one of the biggest lineup of Glorious Tens out there, although I'll have to compare them to NMR. But I still think they have the lead, so if we were to take a look, they have a total of how many Glorious Tens? I just saw something very scary. They have 26 Glorious Tens? Is this for real? So starting off with Miku, well, this is a relatively new Glorious Ten. Starting off with Slice Mup, the Uttermost, the Lion King, Bosnian Kingdom. We have King Arthur, who surprisingly left the game, unfortunately. He, I think, migrated from either uh, server 80, 80, 82, or 71. I'm not too sure. Uh, we have Crypto Shrimp, very strong player. We have King Rize, also very strong. Um, this looks like... Uh, he wasn't from 67, right? I feel like he was from 67. I am kind of confused now. Uh, we have Sandy. We have Pyro Puncher. We have the Lion Club. We have Barry. We have Seth Lord, McLong, the Bat, uh, Lady Bat Baxi. We have... Oh, I'm... <laughs> It's it's almost easy to ignore the Glorious Nines simply because there's so many freaking Glorious Tens. We have Paul, we have Mama, we have Professor, we have uh, Giral Dater, we have Tokyo, we have Ohm. That is insane. What are their Lord Powers? What are their Lord Powers? I have four pages of Lord Powers. I'm scared. Where do I even start? Is this page one? Come on, internet. Work for me. Apparently my internet is dead. Okay, we have, wait, who is this? Miku Eternal. I remember Miku Eternal was a Glorious Nine, but I think he's taking over King Leonidas' account. That is what's probably happened. Okay, so this is Miku Eternal as King Leonidas. We have Bosnian Kingdom at 88 million power. Very strong. Slice Mob at 80. What the heck have you been cooking? Uh, the Lion King, 77. The Uttermost, 68. Uh, Crypto Shrimp 68, like everyone above 70, 70 million Lord Power is very, very strong. And they are definitely a force to be contend with. And absolutely unbeatable in Disorder, no matter what you try. Like if you're one-on-one one -on -one in Area 2 against 75, just give up because there's nothing you can do about it. Destiny, they have very strong activity. And overall, I do not know about how well they cooperate, but it's definitely not bad. Holy Mountain, uh, I would be afraid to go <laughs> against them because they probably have they, they can probably spare two Glorious Tens per uh, per important Breath of Light and still have enough players to contest the Towers as well as the Holy Mountain. So overall, I would rate Ser Server 75 game an S tier, uh, on par with Server 10. Uh, although Holy Mountain-wise, Server 10 might still come out on top, especially when FRZ, General, all their top players are playing, but I think it's going to be a close fight. When it comes to Disorder, they are completely unmatched like the old Drew on steroids. And of course, they are the server that 71 witches wishes they could be. But yeah, cheers to 75. This is definitely a top tier option if you want to migrate here. And finally, I want to cover server 87 XLGX. What a weird name. XLGS, I would say they are kind of good on high-end power, but lacks top-end. And they also kind of lacks a critical activity needed to sustain short-term as well as long-term battles. Their activity level is kind of erratic. Sometimes there will be a lot of players participating, but typically once the battle drags on for longer than five hours, uh, the activity of XLGX really suffers. In the Battle of Destiny, uh, they are very good at racing, particularly because of me. I'm quite good at racing. Uh, in the Battle of Disorder, uh, they can quickly build towards the target, uh, target thanks to Mrs. Calamity and a few other farm accounts. And uh, they are very strong at defending once they are able to build to the target. Overall, I would rate XLGS uh, A- minus, uh, because of primarily a lack of top-end power. So if we were to review their players, we have coming on top, um, where's the Lord Power? Please tell me you have Lord Power in here. Okay, Calamity. 
just don't show Lord Power. Anyways, I'll just go over in terms of Glorious Power then. We have Sloan, who is myself, JFK, Hawk, Luther, Rykon, and a relatively new Glorious 10, Waffles Wonder. We have Prophet, we have Gazbis, who is recently migrated from Thurver 22, I believe. And we have Terror Crew composing the set of Glorious 10s. In terms of Titanos, we have some of the worst Titanos in the game. Exactly zero Titanos resonated. Is this even the case across any of the other servers where the top teams have exactly zero resonated Titanos? Just look at that. We have like, we, this is not even the first page and I see three resonated Titanos. Dude, we are poor as fuck. Literally like, what, page number five and I see a resonated freaking uh, stag. Page number one, we have three resonated stacks. No, two resonated stacks, two resonated chaos. Oh my god. Going up to si server 67, I see two resonated, uh, three resonated chaos, actually. Server um, 47, we have, well, on page two, a bunch of resonated wind striders, a bunch of resonated, resonated everything. So, yeah, uh, 86, 87, moderate activity, uh, moderate power overall. Uh, fairly good. This is like your comfort food of alliances. Come here if you want comfort food. We have a lot of comfort food and cookies. So uh, not too much high-end power, uh, decent activity, but really suffers in terms of high-end activity and high-end power, which is really needed if you want to win a majority of the event. So unfortunately, when it comes to events, Service 87 will have to pick and choose their battles. Now, notable alliances include Servers 101, which is kind of an up and coming new alliances. They have, come on, what is going on with DD Dragon? Anyways, they have Neelix, they have Venom, they have Dutch HM, they have Dr. ZZZ, and a couple more. But they have a decent mid high end power, but they still have a lot of room to grow. So hopefully, once they join our uh, full pool of servers, they can show exactly how strong they are. We have server 107 that is that has a diamond, but I don't feel like they deserve the diamond, so we will move past them. And finally, I want to review the almighty server 116, also known as the Catzilla server. We have none other than Catzilla himself standing at number one with, I believe, 150 million lore power. 141 million lore power. Is this outdated? It is very outdated. So I would just say he's a, he has 150 million lore power, which is about only 10, 10 lore power short of max. So we have Catzilla, we have Tony, and we have a bunch of other glorious tents. We have Deuce Dog, we have... Oh, they did update it. Thank you so much, L Human. We have Garfield, uh, who is, I believe... I think this is... Uh, what's his name? This is Uncle Segler. So we have Garfield, who is Segler's account. We have Catzilla. We have Yuhu. We have Gaspish, who is from Server 5. We have Gokturk. We have One One. We have Grandpa, Charney, Nutella, and of course, Mr. Deuce Dog. So unfortunately, Server 5 lost a couple players, probably due to lack of mid-range activity. So hope these players enjoy their time in Server uh, 116. I'm sure that this server is very, very active because it is uh, much newer than a lot of the other servers I've reviewed today. Lord Power wise, Garfield is second in command at 97 million, followed by Yuhu, Gaspish, and a couple others. So although they kind of lack that mid-high end power, so be, because except for Catzilla and Garfield, the other Lord Powers are respectable but not kind of high enough for that to, to make a big impact in like Destiny or or the Holy Mountain battle. But with a few additional migrations, they can definitely hold their own. And with the invincible power of Catzilla, I think this server is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, in terms of rating, I would say this server currently stands at maybe, okay, if I were to go to my more detailed rankings, which, is, which can be found here, um, Battle Disorder, they are probably between A and A+, uh, Server 116. 
Battle of Destiny because we have Catzilla le leading the fray. They are probably at A+, plus because I do not think that they can deal with Server 75. Maybe Server 75 can actually be S tier now with their massive, what, 26 Glorious 10 players? That's absolutely insane. And finally, ho uh, for the Holy Mountain Battle, I think Server 116 will be positioned at either A+, plus. Yeah, at A plus or S minus tier right now. And 75 can probably move up to S tier. So overall, I would say server 116 currently places at A plus or S minus. If they get a couple additional players, they can easily solidify their position in S minus. But currently, they are more likely positioned at A plus. So I hope everyone enjoyed my review of the current top nine alliances, including a couple additional notable mentions. If you are thinking of joining any of these alliances, just to summarize at the end, Server 39 is your most active. They have kind of a farming system as well as the healing system already established. BBB is also very active. Wolf is fairly balanced. Uh, Server 75 is just batshit crazy. <laughs> XLGX is your uh, heartwarming comfort food. Uh, we have Drew, who is lost in limbo. We have Rome, uh, who is always very strong, especially when their top two fighters are on. And finally, we have S10, who is very powerful in Holy Mountain and the Battle of Destiny. So that is my current review of the top nine alliances. Hopefully in a couple months, I'll be able to update this list because as you can probably see, this list changes on a weekly and definitely monthly basis. So I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, look forward to my next video. Take care.